In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The way of the cross for the people of God. Christ instituted a new covenant in his blood by calling together a new people of God. He made it a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Once not a people, but now a people of God. Like our master, we as people must go the way of the cross, agonizing now in the flesh to fill up what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ for the sake of his body, the church. For our head is Christ, who is handed over to death for our sins and raised up for our justification. Linked with this pastoral mystery and pattern on the dying Christ, we the people of God hasten forward to resurrection and the strength which comes from hope. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Let us pause for a moment to consider the scene of Pilate passing sentence on Jesus. Over against the world's opposition to Jesus, we must be witnesses to him, proclaiming the wonderful deeds of him who called us out of darkness and into his wonderful light. We must always be ready to give an answer to everyone who asks us the reason for the hope we cherish. Walking in the Spirit, we are to speak the message of Christ with all boldness, according to the ministries given us for the upbuilding of his body, the Church. We, the people of God, must witness to Christ by our life and work in the home, in our social group, in our professional circle, and in the midst of human society. By penetrating the world with the Christian spirit, we bring the good news to the poor and humble and give witness to all people, our brothers and sisters of whatever race or nation they may be. Glory, Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Second station, Jesus takes up his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Pause to reflect on Jesus as he places the instrument of his passion on his own shoulders. As followers of Christ, we too must take up the cross. For we know that all creation groans and is in agony until now. And not only that, but all of us who possess the first fruits of the Spirit, we too groan inwardly as we await the redemption of our bodies. The riddle of suffering and the mystery of our human condition deeply stir our hearts and spoil our happiness here on earth. We, the people of God, experience numerous tribulations, fears, anxieties, frustrations, misunderstandings, death and loss. We feel the anguish of our dissensions, divisions and separations. We taste the bitter fruit of our sinfulness, but in the cross is our salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The third station. Jesus falls for the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Dwell momentarily on the first fall of Jesus as he went to Calvary. Jesus compared his kingdom to a field in which the wheat and the weeds grow side by side, to a net which brings up the good fish and bad. While on pilgrimage, we, the people of God, remain liable to sin until we arrive at the fullness of eternal glory. This is why there are failings, humiliations, and scandals in the church, composed as it is of frail and sinning members. This is the reason for the wide gap between the message it offers and the human deficiencies of those to whom it is offered. We, the people of God, because we are human, are in constant need of reform, penance, and purification. The more we succeed in this, the more appealing we will be before all people. Only then can we become a leaven in human society and will renew it in Christ and transform it into God's family. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 
the fourth station. Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Feel in your hearts the agony expressed by the look that passed between Jesus and his mother. The love that drove Mary to be with her son on the way to the cross also derived her to be with us, the people of God, on our earthly pilgrimage. Her divine motherhood unites her not only with her son, but also with his mystical body, the church. She is the preeminent and singular member of the church, our model in faith, love, and perfect union with Christ. We, the people of God, salute you, Mary, as mother of the church. We acknowledge that your maternal role is real and lasting, active and fruitful. After Christ, your place in the church is not only the most exalted, but also one of the closest to us. We join all generations in calling you blessed, knowing that the more we love you, the more we love your Son. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The fifth station. Simon of Cyrene helps carry the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Picture Simon as he is forced to help carry the cross of Jesus. Simon carried the cross reluctantly. Schooled as we are in Christian charity, as God's people, we should be ready to help carry one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Jesus himself came not to be served by others, but to serve and to give his own life as a ransom for the many. Generosity and a deep sense of self-denial will prompt us to serve one another. We, the people of God, pledge ourselves to preserve the dignity of the human person and to assure all persons that they have been created by God for a life beyond the reach of human, of earthly misery. To do this, we show reverence for all of God's children and consider every neighbor as another self. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The sixth station. Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Reflect on the compassion of Veronica as she comforts our suffering Savior. Veronica personifies that part of many in a plane extending the kingdom of God through their loving presence in the field of education, in hospital care, and social work. Through baptism and confirmation, they are commissioned to that apostolate by the Lord himself. We, the people of God, call upon individuals to persevere in making the church present and operative in all helping professions, conscious that they are salt of the earth. Without this activity, the church cannot always achieve its full effectiveness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The seventh station. Jesus falls for the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Ponder for a moment this second fall of our Savior. The weight of sin casts Jesus to the ground. All humanity stands guilty. We fall short in many respects, and the allurements of sin are a constant threat to our love of God. Our sin inflicts injury not only on ourselves, but also on the community of the church. It disrupts the love which binds people to one another and to God. Hence, we need not only pardon from God, but also reconciliation with the church, which is wounded by sin. We, the people of God, acknowledge the healing power of the sacrament of reconciliation. To deserve the name Christian, we need continual pardon from God and reconciliation from God's people. As sinners, we constantly need the purifying and elevating power of the sacraments of Christ has given us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 
the eighth station. Women of Jerusalem, weep over Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Study the attitude of these women of Jerusalem as they sob at the sight of Jesus. These devoted women were deeply concerned about the suffering inflicted on their beloved master. We too must be deeply concerned about the hardships, the physical and mental distress, the sorrows, longings, and hopes of all people. Our thoughts turn to the lowly, the poor, the weak, and the underprivileged, to the multitude weighed down with hunger, misery, and lack of knowledge, and to those afflicted with anxiety and social inequalities, and to all who lack the help to achieve a way of life worthy of human beings. We, the people of God, turn to the poor and suffering who bear the likeness of the poor and suffering Christ. We know that if we close our hearts to them, the love of God cannot abide in us. Let us love in deed and in truth and not merely talk about it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The ninth station. Jesus falls for the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Notice that Jesus has now become so physically powerless that he falls a third time. From the depth of his weakness, Jesus merited for us strength and abundance of grace. He came that we might have life and have it to the full. We abound in God's gracious revelation given us in the scriptures. Through Christ, the word made flesh, we have access in one spirit to the Father and share in the divine nature. We, the people of God, are privileged to have God dwell within us and among us. As participants in the activities of the church, the universal sacrament of salvation, we are members of Christ's mystical body and live in the richness of the people's liturgy, Christian art and culture, and in the power of God's truth, love, and life. Glory, Glory be, be to, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The tenth station. Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Reflect on the feelings of Jesus as the soldiers tear his blood-stained clothing from his body. As God's people, we are called to clothe and adorn the body of Christ. We are to live in such a way as befits the people of God. As Christ's chosen one, we are to clothe ourselves with heartfelt mercy, with kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. But above all these, the virtues we must clothe ourselves with love, which binds the rest together and makes them perfect. We, the people of God, of whatever rank or status, are called to the fullness of Christian life and to the perfection of charity. We hereby renew our promise to follow the poor Christ, the humble and cross-bearing Christ, and so make ourselves worthy partakers of his glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The eleventh station. Jesus is crucified. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Imagine the pain Jesus suffered as iron nails pierced his tender flesh. Christ, the high priest, holy, innocent, and undefiled, offers himself to his heavenly Father to atone for the sins of the world. To perpetuate the sacrifice of the cross, God's people offer the Eucharistic sacrifice as a memorial of Christ's death and resurrection. The Mass, then, is a sacrament of love, a sign of unity, a bond of charity, a paschal banquet replete with grace, a pledge of future glory. We, the people of God, recall Christ's crucifixion as we celebrate the liturgy of the Mass together with the ministerial priest who has received holy orders. By regeneration and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, we have been consecrated into a holy priesthood, and so we declare, 
to him who loves us and freed us from our sins with his own blood, who has made us a royal nation of priests in the service of God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider the last agony of our Redeemer as he surrenders his life for humanity. Through Jesus, God has reconciled us to himself, so that we all can say with St. Paul, he loved me and gave himself for me. Indeed, once he was lifted up from the earth, Jesus said he would draw all people to himself. Hence, the love of Christ, crucified, impels us to esteem all Christians because of our common heritage, and to recognize the virtuous works in the lives of others who are bearing witness to Christ. We, the people of God, are thankful that Christ Jesus gave himself as a ransom for all. His love embraces those who, through no fault of their own, do not know the gospel of Christ. We pray that these will sincerely seek God and, moved by grace, strive to do his will as it is known to them through the dictates of their conscience. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Thirteenth station. The body of Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Picture Jesus once more back in the arms of his mother. But this time he is dead. As Mary enfolded her son's body in her motherly arms, so does she enfold the people of God. Serving the mystery of our redemption and totally dedicated to the person and work of her divine son, she continues her saving role of intercession for us until we have reached our eternal fulfillment at the end of time. She represents the moment when salvation struck for humanity's momentous destiny. In the fullness of time, divinely fixed from eternity, she conceived, brought forth, and nurtured the Savior of the world and stood by him to the end. We, the people of God, honor the first human to be fully conformed to the image of Christ. Because she is holy and faultless, we pray to her and strive to imitate her virtuous life. To Jesus, through Mary, will always be our model. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Fourteenth station, the body of Jesus is placed in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Study the loving care with which the friends of Jesus laid his body to rest. Christ was sent into the world to redeem humanity with his blood and bring them into the kingdom of his Father. That mission is now completed. Just before he died, he cried out, It is finished. His whole life had been the proclamation of the gospel he came to preach. As God's people, we look forward to the glory of the life to come, when all things will be restored in Christ, and all creation in heaven and on earth will be gathered under Christ as head. We, the people of God, realize that this restoration has already begun. For God has given us the wisdom to understand fully the plan he was pleased to decree in Christ, to bring all things in the heavens and on earth into one under Christ's headship. Strong in this faith, we reckon that the sufferings of the present are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed in us. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. God, in his great mercy, gave us new birth, a birth unto hope, which draws its life from the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. As God's people, we press forward amid the persecutions of the world and the consolations of God. By the power of the risen Savior, we are given the strength to cope patiently and lovingly with the afflictions which assail us from within and without, 
and to reveal the paschal mystery of his passion, resurrection, and ascension. By dying, Christ destroyed our death, and by rising, he restored our life. In the name of the Father, and of the, the Son, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'll take care of the rest.